It's a very tough place to be, but it was a lovely experience. I had a, I had a wonderful time, but it was hard. Like the final year, I kept thinking, if I knew how tough this was, I wouldn't have come. But it was good. It was exhilarating. I felt I was learning so much. And I, I had a blast. And You know, the thing is, it's funny being an old guy with young students. They're young enough to be your children. But, you know, I'd been a teacher. I know how to be around young people in a proprietous way, you know. So I was able to work with them very successfully. But also, being older, I had this... You know, it's almost an adolescent desire to prove that old guys could do it. So I worked so hard and I wanted to get the top marks in the class. And I had brought out this competitive streak, which I never normally had, you know. And so I got really good marks, you know. And then I was very lucky. They gave me a job in the law clinic because for an old guy to get employment as a lawyer, they don't, you know, those firms want to mold and train a young articled clerk and turn them into corporate lawyers. Now they look at an old guy, and you've got now a principal who's 10 years younger than you. There's just no hope of being employed. I had the marks, but but the law clinic, the Witz Law Clinic was funny. They had a, a kind of an oddball litigator there. And he he wanted me to work for him. And he, he was a ferocious litigator, and I learned so much from him. And I had a wonderful two years working in the law clinic. And, I ended up running a lot of trials and on my own and I must have done about 40 criminal trials and I had a blast. I mean there were interesting stories, each one of them, and I mean working for for this guy, he was terrific. I mean he he was a skilled litigator but also a total lunatic. I mean you, you know this guy had been tortured, he'd been arrested, he'd been tortured in the days of apartheid and in the new dispensation he'd still butted heads with the cops. And uh, he specialized in suing the cops, which I thought was lovely. And he was so good at it, but he is a nutcase. I mean, he would scream and yell at people, holler at them. But I really liked him, and he was younger than me anyway. And I would always take the line, well, I'm an old union man, you can't scare me, you know. And he'd yell at me, and I'd say, ah, oh, yeah. And I couldn't, he, he him and I really hit it off. And. Uh, I mean, he was exacting. He didn't let me get away with anything, but I learned from him, and it was great. And I really, I think I know how to litigate now. And it's been, it was just a terrific experience. And I mean, the kind of cases we did, if it happened in Canada, I swear the government would fall if some of those cases were so nasty. You know, we, we had, for instance, this was Peter's case, when I, I was parachuted in to work for him. There were three young guys who were in the belly, and, uh, you know, these Indibeli is a language that's spoken in Zimbabwe. So they get picked up by the cops. They, now they're young guys going to church on a Sunday. The cops are doing a raid looking for illegal immigrants. These guys on their way to church are arrested as illegal immigrants. And they're put in the van. One of them's a Zulu, so he wasn't locked up. But he went to get their identity books. And he proved with their books that these guys are all legitimately here. The police sergeant wasn't having any of it. He locked up the Zulu guy as well. He locked up all three of them and sent them to the repatriation center, which is a jail called Ndela, and they were locked up. And they were there nearly, nearly a month. Their life disrupted, their work disrupted. And eventually the repatriation center had to admit that they were South African citizens and had to release them. So this was Geordie's case, suing the Minister of Safety and Security, who's in charge of the police for compensation for this. Now if that had happened in Canada there would be a, a national outcry but there it just goes unnoticed. It's the kind of thing that will happen all the time. But the thing about this case that was appalling was that the instead of conceding the merits because the case we had was so strong, their advocate decided to put us to the proof of every last jot and tittle of our case. And so it was hard work. I spent a lot of time finding witnesses in the township, finding his, this one guy, Johannes's uh, old headmaster, school friend, had to bring in his mother, his father. We had to put them up downtown. We had to bring them to court. And we brought his father in as a witness. Now, his father testified on a Friday. I was going to spend the weekend getting his other relatives. The father testified on the Friday. And what happened then was 
they brought the immigration officers to court. And after he testified, the immigration officers were interviewing him. And we thought, this is sheer intimidation. So our advocate, Mr. Kaji, he goes down there and starts yelling at the immigration officers to send them packing. And then their advocate comes down. And these two advocates almost have a punch-up. They trade blows. They have a couple of... It's almost a slugfest down there. And this is not what lawyers do. You know, they, they wear these smart Roman Dutch kind of frilly collars in court. And it's my lord and bowing and all that. that and my learned friend. Now they're piling into each other. But luckily it never got caught in the security camera. So nothing came of it. But then we, we go back to the office and it's late. And Peter comes in and he's furious when he hears about what's happened. And so we then go to Alexandra Township at about 8 in the evening. And we visit this old guy. And we chat to him. Is he okay? Because we think that they try to intimidate him. Anyway, we go home. And then at about 1 in the morning, I get this phone call. Meet me at the Bramley Police Station. So I hurtle out there. And there's old Peter and the cops and our client. He's been arrested. And Peter's furious, and he wants to get him out of there. And, you know, he had a hell of a temper. I don't know if you can think of a combination of, you know, Basil Fawlty and Fawlty Towers and Doc Martin. You know, you've got right. a rough idea of what this guy's like. Ferociously intellectual, very tall, scared of nothing, and with a hell of a bad temper. And he's yelling at these little cops, you know, and hollering at them. And my job was just to perhaps keep him out of trouble, you know, and be the good guy. Anyway, we got the guy home, and then we spent the next day, we brought an urgent application. We go to court, we stop the trial, and we worked flat out. I had tons of errands to do, and we brought in this really crack advocate, and we did an urgent application, and we got an interdict, which is an, an injunction in North America, to stop them from interfering with our witnesses. And then we carried on with the trial. But it was, it was very exciting, it was high adrenaline work, you know, and a lot of stuff with him was fun. And, you know, I really enjoyed that work. It was really excellent.